you'll see. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another week in Bucko Baseball. I'm your host, Jim Sell, in studio with JK47 and J Dash. We're going to talk about Jung Ho Gung, whether his long term position with the Buckos is better at third base or shortstop, or if you're one of them crazy Yenzer fans, you're going to put him at first base, maybe at pitcher or catcher, or maybe even manager. I don't know. <laughs> There's second base also. We're going to go over them all. <laughs> but on the season, he's hitting 293 with the 368 on base. That's very nice numbers. Seven jacks, 14 doubles, two triples, 33 RBIs, 36 runs, he added five stolen bases. 20 walks, 63 Ks, and 270 bats. So he still Ks a little bit too much. Doesn't take quite enough many walks, but his average is up there. He has a decent on base, well, a very good on base percentage right now. And he's starting to show a little bit more power as well. Now, 47 in the last segment of Corked, me and Jay Dash just did. I asked him if Tulowitzki leave in the NL for the AL, does that make Jung Ho the best hitting shortstop in the NL? Mm, I'd be hard pressed to say there's anybody better right now. You got Johnny Peralta. That was the one I brought up. I still, I mean, I rather personally have Jung Ho. I mean, he looks like a he's gonna be a beast. I mean, he's already a beast. It looks like he's gonna get even better. You could make an argument right now for Brendan Crawford with everything he's doing in yeah, San Francisco this year. Too. I mean, he's fell off. He's fell off a little bit yeah. as of late, but I mean, he's still driving in runs and he's still been an integral part of that giant lineup. I mean, but over the last month, month and a half, I mean, Gung's been getting it done. Yeah, I mean... Gung he, gets it done. Oh, there's he, the shirt. Gung Ho. Oh, we're going to go. make money. Listen, talking about getting it done recently, since Harrison's last game played was on July 5th when he went down with the injury. Starting on July 6th until now, Jung Ho is batting 389. With three jacks, five doubles, two triples, eight ribbies, and 16 runs scored. In July overall, he has over a thousand OPS. He has a 440 on base percentage, and he's hitting 370. In his last 11 games, eight times he had multiple hits. This guy is on a tear right now. Now, you can't expect him to keep hitting like this. Nobody's a 390 hitter. <laughs> Why not? It just doesn't happen, man. Not I mean, you can anyway. you could do it in one season maybe, but you're not going to go from th four seasons in a row hitting 375, 380. You know what I mean? There's one outlier season maybe. Unless he's like the Korean Thai club, but... <laughs> well, I'm just talking in today's game, man. There's nobody that's going to consistently hit even over 350 well, sounds uh, like those, a lot. those days are pretty much over. Yeah. But at least for the time being anyway. But this segment isn't about his offense. We Well, it, it sort of is about his offense because his offense has made him a starter. And when Harrison and Mercer come back, you have to find a way to keep Gung in this lineup. And now a lot of people have speculated of putting him pretty much anywhere on the infield. A lot say move him to first base. Now I say he's too good of a defender with an accurate and powerful arm. So what you're doing is you're taking his best defensive assets and you're hiding them on first base. And that's not something I really want to do long term at least. Now, if for the end of the season, if it was the best option, I wouldn't mind it. But long term, I do not want this guy on first base. If I'm putting him at first base, it's just simply to keep his bat in the lineup plain and simple. I mean, obviously, I think it'd be an upgrade over Pedro Alvarez defensively. I mean, let's face it, I don't yeah, think I'm he should sure. be overthrowing balls in the left field. Not too many people wouldn't be a defensive replacement over Alvarez. Like I said, though, the throwing errors, that's something you got to expect from Pedro. But he also doesn't have many of them this season. That one was yeah. actually his first in a very, very long time. So I'd get over that throwing error from yesterday. I'd be more worried about A.J. Burnett, who we are going to do a segment on here in a little bit so go check that out if you want so what do you think about first base Jim I just think all pirate fans want to put everybody at first base because they haven't had a good first baseman since I don't remember yeah I mean there was Sid Bream yeah. obviously we already put Pedro at first there's talk of putting Walker on first there's talk of putting Gung on first there's talk Ramirez. of putting Aram on first people actually mentioned putting Harrison on first base uh, see, now that would be even worse than putting Gung there, in my opinion. Yeah, I think actually Neil like Walker would be the best option for first base in the long run if you're going to re-sign him. If not, then don't even worry about that right Walker now. Walker can hit from both sides of the plate. Can he throw with both arms? Actually, Walker doesn't hit very well from the right, right side. side of the plate. 
All right, then our second base. Now, this is not his most comfortable position, and it's the most unlikely of positions that he would move to in the future. He likes to be in the east, not the west. Now, if if Walker <laughs> moved to first base, or long term when Walker doesn't resign with the Bucks, because we know he's probably not going to resign with the Buckos, I think Mercer or Harrison would be the most likely to move to second base out of the current major league players, but you also have Alan Hansen in the minors who is still playing good baseball. He's back from his injury, and you're probably going to see him when the rosters expand to 40. And really, I see him as our future second baseman, but if it doesn't work out with him, I still see Mercer or Harrison before I would see Jung Ho Gung at second base. Well, I'd prefer to personally put Gung at third base, move Harrison to second, and let Mercer say it's short. Because, I mean, Mercer, I like Mercer at shortstop. He's a great defender. He is. But we're going to talk about that, actually. We're, we'll talk about third base right now. This is Gung's best position. He definitely looks the most comfortable there. His arm plays very well to position. Now, this season with Harrison and Ramirez, there are too many options to try to put him in the lineup, so I'm not going to put Gung at third base this season. You can't sit Harrison and Ramirez just to play Gung. Now, long term, Harrison was recently signed to that long term deal. He is a great utility player, but you also want to have a defined position for this guy over the length of his contract. Would you agree with that? You don't want him as a utility player for the next six seasons, I don't think. Well, Probably not, but I mean, I'll put it to you this way. If he can fill in anywhere in the lineup and we have somebody to replace him in the lineup, I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Because, I mean, he's been, he's proven to be more than adequate in the outfield and in the infield. Right. So, I but mean, like I said, the outfield, you want, hopefully, within the next couple seasons, Morte, Polanco, and McCutcheon are going to be playing nearly every day. I'm hoping Polanco is going to bat versus lefties here sometime soon, and they are playing him versus lefties more and more often. So I really don't see, I mean, besides when you give a guy an occasional rest, I really don't see the room for Harrison to play too much outfield once all three of these guys are on top of their game. And well, Not to mention you have Austin Meadows, too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And there's more than just Austin Meadows in the minors that look like good outfield prospects for the Pirates as well. The type of money the Pirates gave Harrison, if you could keep him in the lineup every day as a utility guy, at least his bat would be in the lineup. But I don't think that's what they were really visualizing when they gave him yeah. that deal. They didn't expect Gung to get good so quick, I don't think. Well, and I mean, not they, that it's a they bad gave thing. him the deal before Gung, correct? Right, so, I'm I mean, sure they, they were looking at him at least. There was but, Gung. Yeah. So he really was the only answer at third base for the Pirates when they gave him that contract. Now, depth is a great problem to have. I'll take it. If you have too many players at third base, okay, A-Ram's going to be done after the season. So, yeah, you may squeeze him in a little bit uh, down the stretch. If you had to move Gung to first to keep Harrison's bat in the lineup, I would be okay with it. But he's never played it, I don't think. Alvarez probably still has the best home run bat in the lineup, so oh, absolutely. even with Gung's production at the plate, he doesn't provide the same type of production that Alvarez does, and I mean, let's face it, Marte's cooled off a little bit with the home runs. McCutcheon's not having the greatest year as far as home runs go, not, not diminishing anything that he's doing, so you sometimes need that big bat. In the one playoff series we had with the Cardinals, we seen Alvarez go on a tear and hit five, five home runs in that series, seven home runs, something like that. And with a one-game playoff, unless it's against a lefty, I don't know. I want Alvarez's bat in the lineup for that purpose. Yeah, I hear you. I want to keep Alvarez at first base. I know his defensive struggles are bad this season, but I really don't give a crap to tell you the truth because they really haven't cost them anything. None of those errors really cost them a game at all. And his bat has actually tied or won games for him and that's what i see i mean he's the best power hitter on the team still he's driving extra base hits i mean yeah you got to deal with the first base problem but you're talking about keeping harrison in the lineup somehow and trying to fit gung and harrison in and i agree you got to have harrison in this lineup every day i want my best hitters in the lineup and to me harrison is one of the better hitters on his team now the most likely positions for him it's either going to be second or third base long term if you're going to find a defined position for him now with walker who could possibly stay well i'm not saying he's going to stay because i don't believe he is going to but there's the possibility you got mercer and hansen they're all good second base options so i'm i'm not going to play harrison at second base long term and really the best option to keep 
Harrison in this lineup if you're going to give him a defined position is third base and there's a reason why I'd rather have Harrison at third base and it's because I want Jung Ho Gung to play shortstop. I know Mercer is a better defensive shortstop but I want my best hitters in there unless they're completely so horrible on the field that you can't Pedro! I mean, he's not... I, I understand he's playing bad defense. He's the defense. worst defensive first baseman, at least in the NL. But but that doesn't mean that he is so bad that you can't win games with him. I'm talking about if Jung Ho Gung... Listen, especially a shortstop. If your shortstop can't make plays at short, like Marcus Simeon, you're going to have a hard time winning baseball games because shortstops get a ton of balls hit to him on the ground. So if they're making a ton of errors, I don't want them there. But listen, Jung Ho plays solid shortstop and like you said 47 before who's the best hitting shortstop in the national league with Tula gone it could be gung now if you move him to third maybe he's the fifth sixth seventh best hitting third baseman but if if you can have a guy play a position well enough where he's going to be the best hitter at his position that's an advantage you have and that's why I want him to be their long-term shortstop because then you have one of the better bats at that position and you have an advantage over the rest of the league. And let's face it, this is all going to work itself out after the year when Alvarez is gone and Aram retires. And let's not forget, Mercer could actually play a utility role too. I mean, you could teach him to play some third base, I bet. He, you could, he can obviously play short and he can obviously play second base. So you could actually have him play a utility role and be a very good bat off the bench as well but the way I want to see it Harrison at third base Gung at shortstop Walker and eventually Alan Hansen at second base and Pedro and eventually Josh Bell at first base with Mercer coming off the bench well, what's Ramirez gonna do I'm talking long term Ramirez will be gone at this point Ramirez is a rental bat this is my long term lineup like I said Walker's probably gonna be gone so I want Hansen at second base Pedro, he'll be gone. I want Bell at first base if they let him play more than 80 games there before they give up on him. What do you think? Where do you want Gung to play? You say you want him as your third baseman? Right now I want him at third. You want him at third base. So, so you like Mercer in over Harrison if you had to choose. Well, if he had to play shortstop, yeah, absolutely. Well, no, I'm saying Harrison would play third, Gung would play short. You like Gung at third and Mercer at short instead. Uh, this is when Harrison and Mercer are healthy. Well, it's like I said, I like Mercer's defense. You know, yeah. and his bat was starting to come around before he right. got hurt. So, I mean, uh, it's, I really, mean the, it's it, really a toss-up. Listen, defensively, it would definitely be better to have Gung at third because that looks like his best position, and Mercer is your best shortstop. So, defensively, it's definitely Mercer, Gung. But to me, I want offense, and they don't, Harrison doesn't play bad third base, and Gung doesn't play bad shortstop. So to me, the trade-off is a, a lot in favor offensively. I think these guys would be better off playing the the offensive strategy it, just because their defense is at adequate or better. I mean, Gung plays, I, I believe, above average shortstop as well, although the range isn't there. I think with Mercer, and I'm on record of saying this already, Mercer and Harrison's injuries could last a little longer when they've initially been reported and they could struggle to come back right away because they're two tough injuries to come back from. The MCL, it's tough for a, a guy to move ladder, laterally when he injures that. And for Harrison, it's going to be tough for him to squeeze the bat. So this question may answer itself by Harrison and Mercer not being able to make it back. Well, the question isn't for this season now. I'm saying long Ramirez term. Let's say two years from gun. now. <laughs> Where would you want Gung to play in two seasons from now? Where do you want his defined position to be? He's probably best at third base. He is best at third, but would you take Harrison out to have Mercer be your long-term shortstop? Why not? Okay. I'm not big on Harrison. I like Gung way better than Harrison. But that, it's not really the question of Gung or Harrison. It's the question of Harrison or Mercer. Well, you put Gung at third and you have Mercer at short. Exactly. So you want Mercer over Harrison. Now, if it's Gung at short, you got Harrison at third is what I'm saying. Well, I don't want Harrison to play at all because I don't like him. <laughs> I realize that he's good, and that's probably not the greatest opinion, but I don't like <laughs> the dude, so I don't want him to play at all. <laughs> I'd all rather right. just let Gung and Mercer play, even though I don't like Mercer either. Yeah, so there you go. You want them to just trade everyone and have Gung. Why not? Gung can play all four infield positions. That's it, though. I'm saying Gung's your future shortstop just because the bat. The bat will play huge 
at that position. Hit it up at short. He doesn't boot too many ground balls. Yeah. Oh, of course. If he can't handle the position and you got someone like Jordy Mercer just sitting on the bench, you obviously would have to make a move. Now, like I said, if you had Adam Lynn sitting on the bench for the Pirates, they would have made that move for Pedro a long time ago, but they don't really have someone that can compare with Pedro offensively that is better than him defensively. Well, that's all the bucko talk we got for you today. Thank you guys for coming in studio. Thank you fans for listening. Jung Ho, if you're listening, keep hitting, brother. Fans can follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You can follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Go to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. Check out the website at the spread news dot I'm out of breath. I don't have anything else to pitch. Peace.